So, hi everyone. Welcome to uh, TypeScript PR review series. Uh, we're on the second episode of which is a two-parter. The first part uh, was about the introduction of parsing JS doc in TypeScript at all. And this is, that was from an external contributor. And then this one is actually going to be from a TypeScript compiler engineer. Uh, and he took the work that they did previously and then started to turn it into something that could be used everywhere. Um, so to give you all uh, an idea of who we've got here, uh, my name is Otto the Rocks and I'm a compiler engineer here at TypeScript and I really should know how long I've been here. I think it's something like four or five months. And with me I have. Hey, I'm Nathan Shively Sanders. Uh, I've been on TypeScript for a little over four years now. Um, nice. And uh, just one correction, actually, uh, the original PR was from a compiler engineer as well. He's just no longer on the team. Ah, yes, that makes he has, sense. He has done external contributions since then, so that's probably why he got confused. But, yeah. um, OK, very cool. Uh, I don't actually have the ability. I just updated my operating system, so I don't have the ability to share my screen right now. So Nathan, can you take it and put up the PR, please? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to share. Should I share a screen or share a window? I guess I can try this. All right. Love it. Is that okay. working? Yeah. OK. So, so here we are at the top. Go for it. Mm -hmm. I'll back you up. Yeah, let me actually also share. Well, OK. I also want to share the VS Code window. So maybe I should just share the, share the entire desktop. Hold on a minute. Let's see. Do, 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 desktop. All right. OK, so can you see this? Yep. OK, so this PR kind of touches a whole bunch of parts. Uh, so I just wrote up the super simplest architecture diagram uh, for the compiler. Uh, we've basically got a scanner, a parser, a binder, a checker, a transformer, an emitter. OK, so um, scanner and parser work together uh, to parse text into a, into a uh, tree. The scanner is doing like really low level uh, regex type stuff. It looks at each character and decides whether it could be part of an identifier or maybe if it's a space and it moves to the next identifier, that kind of thing. Yeah. The parser builds the tree. Uh, the binder is the thing that's building like a dictionary of identifier names to symbols. So the identifier will be, so say var x, you'll have an x. And the binder will know that anytime you use an x in the correct scope, that it refers to that var x and not some other var x. Uh, um, and yeah, that's about what the binder does. Uh, the checker is the thing actually checking types and giving you errors and types. Um, the transformer is the thing that is taking, say, all of the type annotations and getting rid of them, or turning classes into constructor functions, things like that. Uh, we, the current compiler has a whole bunch of them sort of chained, so you can start off with the newest ECMAScript standard and go back in time, and you just stop at the point where you don't want any more transforms to happen. So when you think of a transpiler, you're effectively thinking of the transformers here. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the emitter turns a tree into a string. It's the opposite of a parser. And it's pretty simple at this point. Cool. All right. So let's go back to the PR. Um, can you see the files? In the, I'm not sure we can actually. No. Do you remember where the file list is these days? Yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah, that. Yeah, OK. So you can see we've got parser, scanner, binder checker. There's even touch to sys, which is like the the, the interface for talking to the file system and things. Oh, yeah. um, utilities. Or slash is our test harness, and we can talk about that later. Um, there's a couple of small changes to the server. Oh, no, actually, that was a, that was a mistaken change that uh, Ryan said he was going to remove, and I'm not, not, not sure what he did. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then there's a bunch of tests. Like that. Like, cool. Kind of tests. All right, so I'm going to start at the scanner because. But before we get started, let's oh, yeah. just look at the overview of this PR. Oh, right. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a great idea. Um, so when was this done? 2016. So the yeah. previous PR was like 2015, right? 
So it was sent out December 9th, and I think people were gone for the holidays, so it didn't get a whole lot of looks until January. It was merged on January 22nd. And then, cool. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So it's pretty old. Um, so, what was the what was the goal of this? I love that it's like a single line description. It's just like we take we add types from JS doc tags. <laughs> yeah. So the previous PR added parsing support, so that the the parser was at least adding JS doc comments to the tree. But that doesn't mean that the checker is actually going to understand what's going on or add add errors. I need to close the door here. It just came. I'll be right back. Um, yeah, so the last one only made it so that it could read some of these this information. All right, I'm back. Uh, so yeah, this is this is more of an end-to-end -end PR where there's a little bit of code in all the all the sections uh, that you'd expect to see errors coming from. There's nothing in the emitter because at this point we still didn't do anything for JS. Uh, or at least we didn't do anything besides the, like copying the JS to the output folder. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure when we start adding support for like constructor functions. I, it was before this or after this. It was around this time, but this is separate from the constructor function support. Yeah. Um, okay. And so the way in which we're going to try and explore it is by looking through the debugger with two specific tests, uh, number two and seven in the files changed. Can you tell me why you picked those two? Uh, before we do that, maybe we should talk about the sort of category of changes for each thing. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, let me go back here, actually. So uh, the scanner and parser actually didn't change that much. All it was was a refactor to take the, basically the previous PR put a bunch of scanner code in the parser in place and said, hey, here's a simple scanner because JS doc is so simple. And uh, this PR takes that code and just dumps it into the scanner. And then there's really not any changes here. There's there's some changes to like make, make it follow the scanner interface, but it's basically yeah. just a code move. Um, and you can sort of see, look at this, a whole uh, bunch of code. Well, yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple. If you see an at, then yield an app token. If you see a new line, carriage return, yield a new line trivia. It's, it really is a simple scanner. Uh, cool. So uh, it, it's just nicer to have it in the scanner file, I suppose. Um, so that's the scanner. The parser has a bunch of changes, but mostly most of that is hooking up additional nodes that needed to uh, also add JS doc comments. There's some of some of them that got missed, essentially. Yeah. Uh, OK, so that's the scanner and the parser. There's not too much interesting going on there. The binder is up here. All right, let me just jump. Yeah, OK. So the binder doesn't add a lot of code, 27 lines. Um, and essentially what that is, is adding support for binding parameter names on the closure syntax for JS doc functions, which I will just briefly type down here. So, you know, the, the TypeScript syntax is this, yep. the closure syntax is this. I see. Um, and so what this PR does is retrofit the ability of parameters to have no name, where previously a name was required. Required. And here so it's said, only in the context of uh, only in JS doc is it allowed to have that. Exactly. Um, and later I went through and said, well, yeah, you can type those in TypeScript and we'll parse them, but we'll give you an error saying this is not legal syntax. You should use this instead. Cool. Um, but at the time, it was only in JS doc. So there's some handling that says, oh, by the way, there's no name for this. Essentially, generate a name and then bind that so that. Uh, if there's a reference to that, so if you have a reference to the first parameter of that function type, yep. then the checker will be able to follow that back and say, oh, well, aha, they were asking about this function type, and they're asking about the first parameter. What's the type of it? And it'll say, oh, its type is number, and by the way, its name is P, P0, P which you, ah. you will see in quick info probably. I, I think, I, I'm not sure if we're going to run that test, but there's a test of yeah. closure syntax. Okay, so cool. that's the binder. Um, like it's also not super interesting. There's there's some plumbing for some other the JS doc record type, but it's not that important. Um, most of this is just yeah. plumbing to make sure all the new pieces have entries and do the thing that the other th that the existing TypeScript syntax does. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's that for the binder. 
um, the checker is kind of interesting. The, the checker is doing two things. The first thing it's doing is uh, doing lookup. Uh, whenever you see a variable, we want to find out what type it is, and the type now may be coming from JS doc. So if you look at this, uh, well, this is where we'll actually hit it in the debugger, so maybe I'll just jump to the debugger. Um, yeah, let's let's do that actually. Let's jump to the, jump to the deep jump to the debugger here. Okay, so can you you can see this right? Yeah, I can see this. Yeah, screen, great. So this is the old uh, way of uh, running tests. It's not too different, except I just get bunches of warnings from Node saying that we're using deprecated uh, command. The CLI augs. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's better. Okay, so we're up on the running under the debugger here. And I should be able to attach. And let me show you the, the file I'm running right now before we do it. So this is a four slash test. It's called that because every line that you prefix with four slashes is the test. I didn't ask to say that. Hello. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Well, we're in the checker. I want to look at the test first. That's good. So every yeah. every line that you prefix with four slashes is part of the test. Everything that's not is not. So it's it's not the lead. It's it's kind of a, a confusing, but uh, it's a little bit confusing until you understand it, and then it makes tons of sense. Okay, I'm glad to hear a new person say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but here the test is at param number, and then the a is surrounded in brackets, which means it's optional. And then you have a function f a, and then the assertion is that if you go to this marker right here and ask for quick info, your quick info will be function f a optional number void. So it's basically so sort of weird. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. No, I was just about to say exactly what you were probably going to say. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it asserts that we're expect. able to turn this into a type annotation that would be equivalent to the one in TypeScript. Um, and you notice back then, uh, well, I think you still have to do some of this. There's like a special allow non-TS extensions, which... It's like allow JS effectively nowadays, but... Yeah, uh, I'm not even sure if this is a TS config thing or if this is just a special test harness thing. Uh, um, because I know at file name is not a TS config thing. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, so... Cool. All right, so that's the four slash test that we're running. So um, I have a breakpoint at the point where we start checking A, and then we have to figure out what is the type of A. And the reason we're asking that is because when you go to this marker and ask for the type of F, pretty quickly we start asking of what are the types of each each parameter. Right. And we're going to skip the, the thing where we turn a function declaration into a signature with its parameters and everything, because it's, it's kind of tedious. But the interesting part is where we look up from A to figure out what the type of A is. All right, so here we are. OK. So we're in get type for variable like declaration, which includes variables, parameters, and also property declarations and classes. Um, and here's the new code. Uh, if you're in a the context of JavaScript, we've renamed these to be shorter, but yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're in JavaScript, the very first thing we do is look for a uh, type declaration on a JS doc comment. So let's jump into that. So I'm gonna step in here. Oh, these names. Okay. Get type for variable like declaration. <laughs> Get JS doc, doc type for variable like declaration from JS.com. Brilliant. It's like a it's like an Objective C programmer. This is how I write my code. I, I have okay. to stop doing it. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. It's fine. Um, I I I'm I'm coming from the Haskell camp where you name your functions nub in <laughs> three characters in the dictionary. So. All your types of T. <laughs> yeah, T, the best type. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so we're going to look for an at type tag. Uh, so let's look at that first. We're not going to find this because uh, if you remember, it's, it's an at frame tag and it's not directly on the A, it's actually on the function. But it'll be probably instructive to go here. So uh, one of the things that, one of the quirks uh, of this particular stage of the implementation is that every single type you ask for, every single time you ask for a JS doc tag, it does a complete lookup. Um, that was mostly okay back then because lookups were not that uh, expensive. It's this is like lookup through, like 
through the parent hierarchy. Yeah, in this case, uh, I think it only looks like up one or two of the parent hierarchy. Nowadays, it will often sort of climb around the tree a bit, trying to find things. Uh, and it can get expensive if you don't catch it. All right, so, oh, that's right. We didn't have strict null checks here. So we're like, if not node, return undefined. Anyway, you can't do that anymore, so that's good. Uh, okay, so now we're getting calling the main workhorse thing. We ask if it has a JS doc comment. It doesn't, so we try to find this pattern. Check checks. It's false, though, so we skip it. Interesting. Okay. We didn't find it. Nope. There's no nothing directly on it, so okay. there's no, nothing to get here. Okay, so next we say, is this a variable declaration? It's not, so we're going to skip the next one. And then finally we say, is it a parameter, which it is. And so we call it another function that looks, basically it's looking up one level. Um, so it says, okay, if you have a name, do you have an identifier? If you do, save the identifier, which should be A. Yes, it's A. So then basically what we're going to, be going to do is see if we can find a comment on the parent. And if we can, then we'll then we'll scrape through its tags looking for a parameter whose name matches. Yeah. So we're gonna look on the function declaration. Oh, that's right. This is old pre bug <laughs> thing. So I so I, this node happens to be a function declaration. You can tell because it has like a body, body. and a name and parameters and stuff, but there's no nice under like, under oh, debug. debug. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to just have to know. I remember this when I first joined the team. He was like, how do I tell what kind of node I'm looking at? This is, this is very confusing. <laughs> Memorize flags. <laughs> yes, uh, you look at kind, you're like, oh yeah, kind, 215. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, so this this is the function. And we should find a JS doc comment. So yes, there's a JS doc comment. Now, if we found it, now we look at the tags. And let's just look at those tags here. There should be two of them, right? No, nope, there's only one yeah. because this is a minimal test, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that okay. should just be the param. Here we have the parameter tag. We cast it. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's changed and gotten better. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a lot more casts back then. So we didn't have any of the narrowing. Oh, we didn't have the narrowing functions, yeah. So we get that name. And that name should be a. Oh, it's an identifier. Name dot text. I'm not getting hover from this. Me neither. Boo. Oh, it's because it's name under six. Under six. Oh. So they got renamed, and so the source map support in VS Code isn't smart enough to map. Them. We don't. We don't get any hover for name because it has a different underlying name. Um, probably because it shadows a bunch of other stuff. Shadows, yeah, a bunch yeah. of things at this point in scope. At any rate, a equals a, so that's the parameter tag that we're interested in. Cool. And then we check to see if it has a type expression, which it does. Yeah. Yep. And is this? Oh, none of this has debug information. Okay. You have to trust me. It says number. <laughs> um. Yeah, the debug information is much better these days. Good. Anyway, so that we got the number type. Um, and then uh, this one is not going to be super interesting. But get type from type node turns number keyword in, into number type. There is actually a little bit of new support here for. There's a JS doc array. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of JS doc things that are just mirrors of real types, which is kind of yeah. weird. But there's a, there is a JS doc function type, which is the closure thing. Uh, it has, yeah. yeah, it has slightly different rules, I think. No, you know what? I think I got rid of that. I think it's just a normal function type, though. So it treats this number that's inside the JS doc comment as the same thing, the same syntax kind as a normal number keyword, right? Because that's how yes. it sits as a breakpoint. Yeah. That's right. In fact, I don't know if we covered this too closely last time, but the, the parser switches to the normal TypeScript parser. Oh, it does, yeah inside these yeah um it doesn't do that at the top level at this point in history but uh at, at the present day the minute you enter these braces you're in normal typescript land for sure. parsing types 
So if you type number, that's a number keyword. Um, at this point in history, I think you didn't start parsing this until you tried a bunch of other stuff like function types, and the, the, the closure function syntax and things. Cool. All right, so that one was, this one's like super simple. Number keyword equals number type. Um, well, let's look at a type reference. Let me remember. Yeah, so, okay. So let's let's finish up with this one and we'll uh, resume with a different test. This one shows off, instead of just typing, typing number here, you type F and F is a reference to something else. So get type from type reference, sorry, get type from type node now has to do, to do a lot more work. You can't just say number keyword, number keyword equals number type. It has to say, number what is it? Look up. It up. Yeah. I need to resolve its type. Um, so, uh, what actually, let me put a breakpoint here for next time, because it might be a little interesting here. Okay, so let's try number seven. Oh, my fans can uh, Seven. Number seven. Okay. And let's reconnect. So, uh, for this test, we're going to use the simple var v. Does it have a type annotation? Or does that have a JS doc comment on it immediately? Yes, it does. Okay, well, yes. that's so the, the syntactic lookup is pretty simple. Should I connect it? We have a monitor, or do you have an actual plane outside? Good question. It's New York City, so anything could be happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's a clear day here, so there might be planes, except I don't hear one, so. Uh, I think it's on my side, but I got no idea what it is. All right, are we, are we running? Uh, it looks like it ran. No, wait. Yeah, I, I don't think it hooked uh, up. Didn't catch. That's oh, you got Jake era. Right. Did I know? No, that's just that, that's because I disabled linting. Remember? Uh, yeah. Okay. Linting was set up. We got the. Oh, yeah, mm. it's definitely flipping to being debugging for me for a second. Yeah, I know. Um, but it could just not be actually hitting the, the the test. It is passing. It's possible, yeah. But it should be looking up. Uh, let me see where I put this other breakpoint. I mean, it should totally be hitting this thing. It's a variable like declaration. Uh, wait. Uh, seven. Yeah. So that type. Oh, did I break something? I think I might have. No, no, that's right. You have a function, you have a reference to the function, and then you ask for the type of var v. And the assertion is that, oops. Assertion is that V now gets this function type. Hmm. Go back to maybe try if we got you've got inspect break on, right? So it should wait until you have to press play. Like it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Debug brick is on. Yeah, it says debug brick, and then it warns you that you can't use that. Or can? Or maybe you can. It's not really <laughs> it isn't happy about it anyway. Okay, so now it's attached. Yep, that's flipped me over. And it's running, and we broke. Yeah, nice. Okay. Hey, third type lucky. Where are we at? Let's see. What's the name of this thing? It is a go to. Uh oh. Go to? Oh, is that a different test? Well, that means we're out. We're checking this. Oh, this. <laughs> That's not good. OK, let's run it again. Uh, node is, type name is, oh, OK. Let's look at the declaration again. Look at this name. Yeah, let's go to. Is that like, I mean, that should happen afterwards. Verify. Yeah, this is just part of our infrastructure. Uh, 
Yeah, I know. Name is expected text. I'm going to take off this breakpoint because it's causing yeah. problems. Let me add a watch for declaration. Uh oh. Done. <laughs> and declaration dot name dot text. Okay, let's just run it. Infinity. Oh, so you can go through every F single. X seems like a good primitive. name. Are we interested in X? No, we have F, A, B, and V. Yes. Radix. Uh oh. Okay. So let's put a. <laughs> Yeah, because this might be checking the parameter of every single lib definition. F? Yeah. Or is it V? I think we want V, actually. Oh, V. Uh, oh, V. Yeah, yeah, you do want V. Well, I'm not entirely sure, so. <laughs> OK. Let's go V. All right. Is right. <laughs> so are we in a JavaScript file? No. Okay, so this is not right then. There's another V. I have a hunch that there's a lot of V's here. You know what? Let's um Yeah, I want to remove the point. That's fine. Okay. I don't know why we weren't attaching before, but seems to have. Let's just double check. So here's our declaration. It should have a doc comment on it. A doc comment. Not defined. No. Hmm. Oh, I bet we could restart the frame back then. Yeah, let's restart. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure that's V we're looking for, but what's it got? Uh I'm just taking it. so it's funny. As I tried as I like hover and do the debugging, it like just erases it as in real time in front of me as it, as the stack trace changes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. No, no, no. Trying to be uh, useful. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so this is a more complicated parse tree than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, so V is just this node here. And it actually needs to look at the var V. So this is the actual node that the, the comment is on. Oh, the var. Well, it was not as trivial as I thought it was. It was close. It was simpler than the other one. But it's still, you still have to look at the parent in order to find the JS dot comment. I see. Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay, so now we should have. Yeah, all right. Okay. Now we're calling get type from type mode, which is what we wanted to do in the first place. Cool. It's going to jump to JS doc type reference. So that's a, essentially a special marker that says it's a type reference, meaning it's not type. like a number or keyword or something. And it happened in JS doc. So we're going to do some stuff. Do, do, do. We happen to find out it's a type reference. So um, we could name. This is not too complicated, right? Just the, uh, I don't remember why we need to use different property. I think we need to normalize that at some point so that it just yeah. changes the same thing. F. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. That's what we thought it was. So now yeah, resolve type of things where it gets interesting. So the first thing we do is we try to resolve the entity name as a type, and the reason this is. I different and tricky is that f is not actually a type so f is a value it's a function it's not like it's not a it's not a function type um and in typescript if you do this in fact we can because we have a live measure we can say function f bleh, and you, you say our x type f <laughs> I think and we need to do it on land. X, not F. Find TS land. No. Any? Isn't this what you need the type of? 
So then it says f refers to value, but is being used as a type here. Uh, yeah, and yeah. TypeScript, yeah, you can type of. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> why the linter going on here? I, I, so full disclosure, I normally use Emacs, and I have the, the linter turned off because I don't like seeing squiggles as I type like this. So, yeah. It, you can also turn the linter off in VS Code, I'm sure. But okay, so in in TypeScript, you cannot do this because f is not a type; it's a value. You say type of, and you get the thing that you want. To or print print goes to string. Okay, so um, the difference is we do want this to happen in JavaScript because what if somebody instead of return bleh, they written written this dot x equals one, this dot y equals. Oh, completions are so bad. Okay. Oh, it's because I'm not in JavaScript. It's like it's doing its best. <laughs> but if somebody wrote this, then f would be essentially a class. So you uh, yeah, make this upper class, uh, uppercase. So. Uppercase F. <laughs> so here it seems weird to have to say type of my class. You just want to say let X colon my class. And so that's this this PR has the beginnings of that support. It doesn't really justify it because uh, I don't think it had constructor function support at that point. Maybe it did, um, but that was coming. So, so is that just like very long view? It wasn't oh. a very long view. It was in the next few months, I think, that this happened. It may have already happened. I haven't, I haven't tested this this build sure. extensively to see what happens, see what works and what doesn't. Um, at any rate, that that's that's the idea. That's what's happening here. Is that we want to be able to resolve f f even though it's not a type, it's a value. So what we do is we resolve the entity name passing flags type, and it's going to come back with nothing. Nope. No symbol by that name with a type. Yeah. And they say, ah, but if you didn't find anything and your type reference, try again and see if you work with a value. And it says, oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. And so you get a symbol. And then uh, the next thing you do is you say, uh, oh, this is different. OK, so you do some stuff. You're eventually going to call get type of symbol. Yeah. Oh, this is new code too, right? You actually had this code had to be added. so. If it's a value, this is weird because you're supposed to be getting the types of a type reference here. But if it, if it happens to be a value and also it's a type reference, then fine. We'll give you, give you the type of the symbol. And of course, the type of the symbol is the thing we wanted in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. It's A, B, and goes to four. So this this new code here basically says, oh, by the way, you're you're sort of in a weird state, but that's you got here because it's JavaScript. So do this thing. Yeah. Um, and this code is the the structure is still basically the same. We're not super happy with it, but it, that's how it still works. And it's it's grown a lot of complexity over the over the years. Uh, largely to support constructor functions better, but also to support module that exports. So. This didn't support modules or anything. It just assumed, oh, it's JavaScript. It must just be a script file. So and now we support like classic common JS modules quite a bit. So get type of symbol. Um, can we still do? Can we do type to string? Type. Mm. Yeah, still type to string. Okay. Nope. Never mind. Anyway, the the caching is not super interesting. I guess this is probably. Sure. It. Yeah, so we took the type reference and turned it into a type using nice. tiny JavaScript rules. Uh, so I think that's about that it. Debugging. Uh, yeah. Do we want to talk about the tests anymore? I don't know if we had any more there. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's worth a little bit. I think we covered a little bit like what Foursquare does, but I think people don't know why Foursquare exists. Like, why would you write a false square test? Uh, right, OK. Yeah, so this is better than the unit test from last time. The unit test from last time basically said, dump a whole bunch of internal data structures and assert that they're a certain form. And this thing is saying, if I have a program that looks like this, assert that the language service behaves a certain way. And at the time, the language service support was all we had for JavaScript. So it made sense to test it from a language service perspective. 
Um, the other test harness test infrastructure we have basically is a baselining thing where you show up with a source file and say, I expect it to emit this JavaScript file and have these types. And so you have, I don't know if you can see my hands. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, maybe you basically not. have okay. types of files. <laughs> oh, it produces these files in these yeah. types. Whereas here you say, I have a, a file, JavaScript or TypeScript, and it behaves this way when I have a live, live language service running instead of a batch compiled. Cool. Uh, nice. So yeah, you have a bunch of things like verify. So there's, there's still a unit testy type assertions, but they're higher level, so you've got um, there's quite a few of these. You can look at completions, you can look at quick info, and you can look at, uh, what's the other one? Go to, go to definition, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, so very much like how TypeScript interacts with your editors, basically, is almost entirely covered by for slash. Right. Yeah, and I think you can even simulate edits here. I've, I don't know if I've ever written a test like that, but you, in the case of you have a really tricky caching thing, sometimes you have to say the test is start with this file, edit it a couple times, and ask for quick info after you've edited it or something like that. Um, but we don't write tests like that very often because we don't have caching problems that often. <laughs> but, say that. <laughs> I should say knock on wood or something because <laughs> anyway. Um, but okay. yeah. It's a nice library. It's just it's a little little finicky sometimes. So. Yeah. Um, so I think that covers it. We've covered um, sort of what it looks like from writing tests to all of the sort of different high level architecture architectural parts that's required to build this JS doc support. Um, how different is this code from what it looks like today? Oh, that's a good question. So uh, let's see here. So in utilities, we were looking at all this get JS doc type tag, get JS doc return tag. Um, like these entry points are still here, but they call they all call a single function that does much more work. So here we have this code that says if you have a JS doc comment, Turn it. Otherwise, try to recognize that one pattern. And now um, there's some abstract code that sort of it it ends up looking for about ten different patterns or so, but it does so in a loop in a, in a way that it reuses the code. So you don't just have ten ifs in a row, and it's cached. Um, on the checker side, uh, the, the structure like we were looking at get type from type reference, right? This code is yeah. almost the same still. Yeah. Um, resolve type reference name is much more complicated, but we also have much better support for common JS. So we still have this fallback, but there's a bunch of stuff. And then we also try to resolve expandos. We didn't we didn't support expandos back then. So that's another thing that you have to sort of say. If you have an expando, you're actually interested in the, in the original declaration, not the one that you're expanding right now. Not that not the not the usage where you're expanding. Uh, uh, expando objects are ones where you start with like a very constrained type and then people keep expanding it by adding new properties. Yes, yeah. And you can do this with functions, you can do it with like just objects, and you can do it with classes, although. That's yeah, pretty wild. <laughs> it's JavaScript, it's the Wild West. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, and then like the the other code, like the, the structure of the syntactic checks inside of the checker haven't changed that much. Um, there's just a lot more places where we do it now. So for example, back then, uh, you you do a pre-check to say, oh, if I'm in JavaScript, see if I have a JS doc comment. But you'd only do that, do that for variable like declarations. Now, if you have a function, you, you may do things like say, ask whether you have type parameters. And so you'll say, okay, if I'm in JavaScript, check my check my tags for an at template. And if I have an at template, then those are my type parameters. Uh, and at this point, we weren't doing any of that. So uh, it's just take this pattern and, and repeat it a lot throughout the checker so that JavaScript supports a lot more complete. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, seems pretty good. <laughs> Seems pretty good to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And uh, thank you, Nathan. And uh, thank me, me. Yeah. Ciao. <laughs> yeah.